you may be able to send hard outdoor boulders, pumpy outdoor rock climbs, or maybe you even scaled the mighty El Capitan. But can you do the pink one in the corner? Because, as we all know, where it really counts is in the gym. Yeah, the only reason I did Big Bang was because it replicated the pink in the corner. Over the last decade, the indoor climbing world has evolved into something completely different from its humble beginnings. Throw back 40 years and we were literally climbing on brick walls. But even in the last 15 years, 2D straight up and down with little holes dotted around has evolved into wildly imaginative 3D structures with enormous holes and volumes in an industry that promotes creativity when it comes to root setting. Needless to say, the demands of the contemporary indoor climber are vast, and to meet this, indoor climbers need to have the right tools for the job. This is the third video of the three-part series that has been kindly supported by my climbing shoe sponsor, Scarpa. In the first video, we took a look at common myths surrounding climbing shoes. In the second video, we looked at the best climbing shoes for outdoor climbing. But today, we're going to be diving headfirst into the wonderful world of plastic pulling to help you find the best climbing shoe for you. As I've said in previous videos, climbing shoes are not designed for the discipline of climbing we do, but more so the type of foothold we're using. One of the most interesting things about modern indoor climbing is that compared to outdoors, the hand and footholds are a lot larger. I mean, that's not to say you don't get small hand and footholds, but compared to rock, they rarely get as small and they tend to be a lot smoother and more rounded. On top of all that, the style of movement indoors is a lot more dynamic and you tend to climb on steeper walls. I mean, just think about what it's like for a beginner climber indoors. At most bouldering walls, there are probably quite a few steep overhangs on big mondo jugs that most beginners could probably get up. But when was the last time we saw that outdoors? Because of all this, the requirements of our footwear is pretty different indoors compared to outside. Now I'll get into more detail on specific requir requirements for you in a minute. But first, here is the universal criteria I stick to when choosing indoor climbing shoes. No stiff shoes. There are rarely footholds indoors as small and as sharp as outside. So a ridiculously stiff shoe is just not needed because you don't need that level of support for your toes. Shoes like the La Sportiva TC Pro, the 510 Anasazi Guide or the Scarpa Maestro are built to the extreme end of the spectrum and rarely have a place at the climbing wall. And soft rubber. When it comes to rubber, you want it soft and sticky for getting lots of friction on big holds. Now there are lots of different rubber compounds used by all the different brands and it's honestly a lot about personal opinion. But here is a rough idea of their relative stiffness. For indoor climbing, you should try and stick, no pun intended, to the softer of these rubbers and avoid the stiffer ones. Now Scarpa uses mainly Vibram rubber on the soles of their climbing shoes as well as their own new soft S72 rubber compound. Vibram Excess Edge rubber is the stiffest and although it's not to say it won't perform indoors, Excess Grip 2 performs much better and is just as durable at an indoor wall. Every climber climbs for different reasons, with different goals, and the footwear you choose for your climbing should meet these needs. Maybe you're a hardcore gym junkie and just love indoor climbs. Or maybe you're using the wall to train for your rock climbing projects. Or maybe you just climb as a means to keep fit. Now, I know I've always said that climbing shoes should be chosen based on the footholds you use, but in this case, the footholds indoors remain the same regardless of your reasons for going indoor climbing. So it makes more sense to look at how our activity will decide what shoes we wear. In this next section, I will recommend the best shoes for the type of climbing you do indoors. Firstly, what do I mean by performance shoe? These are shoes that are designed specifically to help you achieve the highest degree of performance during your indoor climbing. These aren't necessarily designed for comfort or durability, but whether it's to help you stick that savage toque on your indoor boulder project or to give you an edge in the next competition, these shoes will help tease that little bit extra from your performance. But what makes the best performing indoor climbing shoes? In my mind, their basic criteria 
is having a soft and malleable midsole for ease flexing during smearing, soft sticky rubber for good grip on rounded surfaces such as volumes, a good amount of toe rubber for toe hooking, precise around the toe with a relatively high toe box for comfort and a soft squishy heel for getting good grip, heel hooking volumes and fat slopers. So these are the main points I look out for when choosing a good indoor performance shoe. As without any of these, you'll be losing out on key performance benefits. Now, for the ease of identification, I would probably say there are three types of indoor performance shoe. You got your smearers, you got your grabbers, and you got your pushers. Smearers are designed to be soft, but have a bit more precision and support to the toe, which allows them to stand on smaller footholds as well as on smeary volumes. The Scarpa Drago and TN Pro for Unparalleled are great examples to look at here. They are similarly designed in that they utilize a softer rubber on the toe that leads its way up the foot with a single Velcro strap, which means more of that rubber can be utilized during the toe hooks. The Drago actually uses a much softer rubber compound found only on this and the Chimera called M50. It's one of the softest, stickiest rubber compounds around, making it ideal for this purpose. <coughs> Okay, now you've got your grabbers here. These are softer yet again, and as the name suggests, the name of the game is being able to grab footholds like a second pair of hands. Shoes like the Spirit S and the Fury Air, as well as the 510 Teams, are great examples here. These shoes are built to feel like rubber socks when it comes to climbing with them. Their purpose is to give your foot the power to grab a foothold and pull on it, the way a monkey uses its feet to grab and pull on the branches of trees. To understand this, you really need to understand the nature of steep climbing. It's not just about pushing through your feet, but also pulling, and you need a soft, sock-like fitting shoe to achieve this. And lastly are the pushers. These are climbing shoes with a stiffer midsole that utilizes, that utilizes a softer rubber sole to better grip. If your wall has a lot of small edges for feet, or if you're wanting a bit more support for rope climbing, then this is what you're after. Scarpa's Instinct VSR as well as La Sportiva Attacky are some good options here. If you want to see these shoes in action, all you have to do is watch the World Cup circuit. Honestly, the best indoor climbers in the world use each and every one of these shoes to help them achieve their best performances. Okay, sorry to interrupt while editing now, but I'm pretty sure most climbers on the World Cup circuit are getting paid the, the big bucks to wear them shoes. You could argue that, but their goal here is to win the comps, and if they didn't wear the best shoes, they just wouldn't be able to perform the best. So we've just spoken about performance shoes that will help you achieve your best, but this isn't always the right shoe for training. A training shoe is your workhorse, they're comfortable and durable, and when it comes down to the heavy demands of long, arduous climbing sessions at the wall, these shoes will outlast all others. For example, the Furia Airs. They might be awesome performance shoes, but if you climb in them for four hours a day, four days a week over a three month period, they'll lose their edge, quite literally. But what makes the best climbing shoes for training? Now, in my mind, their basic criteria would be having a less asymmetric and less downturn design for a more comfortable fit, a more durable construction for longevity, a soft to medium stiff midsole, softer for bouldering, stiffer for rope climbs and circuits, soft sticky rubber for good grip on rounded indoor holds, and very easy to take on and off, such as a Velcro or a slipper. Now, there are many great shoes out there you can use for daily training. Scarpa's Vapor Vs and the Arpia models are a great mid-stiffness shoe that I like for rope climbing and bouldering indoors, as are the Last Motiva Attacky. But there's a new type of dedicated training shoe that I really want to discuss, as it is really changing the way we look at indoor climbing shoes. Now, until recently, there were no climbing shoes designed purely with indoor climbers in mind, definitely not at a beginner level, and most certainly none specifically for training. I mean, why would you want a specialized training shoe if all the others can do the job? Because it's not just about just doing the job. We want our shoes fit for purpose. 
whether that's a shoe design to perform or a shoe design for training. And thankfully, climbing shoe brands are listening. Scarpa and La Sportiva had me first off the mark with their latest innovations, Scarpa's Veloce and, La Sport and the La Sportiva Cobra, two shoes designed solely with indoor climbing in mind. But it's the Veloce I want to talk about because not only was it one of the first shoes in the world dedicated to indoor climbing, but it also completely reimagined the nature of what an indoor specific climbing shoe could be. Now there are plenty of climbing shoes that fit some of the criteria I mentioned above, but not all of them. The Veloce stands out in this respect, and because of this, you can see that it was built with indoor climbing and training in mind. Not only that, but the Veloce is also a phenomenal shoe to start out with if you're a beginner climber. Until the Veloce, shoes designed for beginner climbers were rigid and stiff with thick rubber soles. Now, there's two reasons for this. Historically, beginner climbers started outdoors, and so they needed stiffer shoes to stand on small footholds. Obviously, that is not the case anymore, as most climbers start off at their local climbing gym. Also, beginners tend to have pretty bad footwork, and need a shoe that is robust to withstand the heavy abuse they give their shoes on a daily basis. The terrible irony of this is that because they are so robust, beginner climbers have absolutely no sensitivity through their toes, so they can't feel what they're standing on. And because of this, it then means they don't trust their feet and actually end up climbing worse. Now, comparing the Veloce with other brand models is difficult because honestly, there's not much like it. The last Rativa Cobra was the closest I could find, but that still is a fairly asymmetric and downturn shoe focused on performance over comfort. Of course, you can't have everything. The Veloce is not a performance shoe. It won't toe hook like a Drago, doesn't have the techie heel of an Instinct, and it lacks the precision of a booster. What it misses in some performance characteristics, it makes up for in comfort and durability. This might not be the shoe you win World Cups with, but it certainly could be the shoe you train for them in. And lastly, if you're training for outdoor climbing, the performance requirements for your shoe are perhaps not as important since your indoor climbing is merely training for the real thing. As training for outdoors is the main focus here, the most important criteria is similarity. Optimal indoor performance isn't as important, but having a shoe that replicates the feel of your outdoor shoe can help a lot with the transition from indoor training to your outdoor projects. Now, as somebody who spends their indoor time training for the outdoors, I know how big a transition that can be. And this transition can be made easier by simply having the same shoe you use indoors as you use outdoors. As I said before, there is no one shoe to rule them all. But there are a few that do a lot of things very well. Now, a good multi-purpose shoe will be one that has a softer rubber sole for easily sticking to flat surfaces such as indoor volumes, but also has a stiffer midsole for standing on smaller footholds on rock. You also want something quite adaptable on all angles, so avoid super downturn shoes in place of something either flat or with a little bit of a downturn. And good durability is a must, as switching between indoors and out regularly will take its toll on them. Knowing which shoes fits all these criteria isn't easy, but that's where I come in. From Scarpa, the Instinct BSR is an obvious candidate, as are the Baby Velcros and the Arpia models here. However, good alternatives in other brands certainly exist, and some good options to think about are the Last Motiva Katana, Otaki, and the 510 Anasazi Pro, and not to forget the Red Chili Voltage. One other thing that's worth mentioning is that brands often have climbing shoes that have a counterpart built on the same last that might be more suited to outdoor versus indoor. If this is the case and you fit that shoe, it's not a bad idea to invest in that counterpart to have as your dedicated outdoor shoe. For example, Scarpa's Viva Velcro is a great all-rounder, but the Vapor Lace has a stiffer rubber sole and midsole, making it a great alternative to have at your disposal. The transition between indoors and out will then be made easier because the Velcro and lace version are built to the same last, with only a few technical details changing the way it performs. Another brand example of this is the last video Solution and Solution Cop. The Solution is obviously a very popular shoe and fits a lot of feet, but performance wasn't as good indoors as it was outdoors, so, so the designers at La Sportiva decided to build the Solution Cop built on the same last with a few changes to make it more suited to indoor climbers. 
Having a single shoe for training indoors and climbing outdoors is often seen as a cost-effective way of purchasing shoes. But if you have the means, investing in a second pair of shoes could also be very cost-effective, as both shoes will last a lot longer and you'll get more out of them. Now, I know this has been a long one, guys, so well done if you stuck with it. That's all for me for now. Big thanks to Scarpa for the support in this series. I hope it's been helpful to all of you in your search for the best climbing shoes for you. If you have a burning question about shoes that you're itching to ask, just comment below and I'll do my best to reply. And if you want even more quality information, head on over to the scarpa.co.uk blog where I've written some awesome in-depth articles on climbing shoes. There's a hell of a lot more technical info there than in this video. And if you're a proper gear geek like me, I know you'll love them. And lastly, make sure to like, subscribe, and ding that wee bell from when our next video is out. And if you do fancy supporting the channel a bit more, why not consider becoming a patron? There's plenty of new original content there every week. And until next time, guys, catch you later. Woo! Is that good? Oh, beautiful. Absolute beauty. Boom! Okay.